everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about finding that acute angle between the lines x plus 2y equals 7 and then phi x minus y equals 2. For this problem, there are actually many ways to do it, but since I've been making videos about vectors, then I'm going to solve this problem using vectors. So now let's get started. So first, I can actually find a parameterization for this line. So what I can do is that uh, first, I can just label this line as uh, line 1, so I can call this line 1, and then I can call this one line 2, okay? And then so now what happens is that for line 1, then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just let y be equal to t. And so what happens is that I can simply just, now my equation is that I'm going to get x plus 2 and then plug in the t in there so as you can see that the y actually becomes a t and then we are going to get what what do we get here we are going to get 7 and so now i just need to find an expression for x in terms of t so what happens is that i'm going to just solve for x here so moving the 2t to the right hand side of the equation i'm going to get x equals negative 2t plus 7 and so because I already have an expression of x and also have an expression for y, so I'm going to write it in the vector form. So uh, if I'm writing down the vector equation for this line right here, I can call all one, and then I can just write it as negative two t plus seven, and then the second component would be just t for the y component here. Okay, and then so that is for line one, and then I'm going to do the same thing for line two. So now let's just do that. So for line two, uh, this time I'm actually going to let uh, x be t. Okay, and then so what happens is that if I just let x be t, then I'm going to plug the t into the x, so I'm going to get 5 and then t right here, and then minus y is equal to 2. Okay, so now if I am solving this equation for y, so what I can do is that I can move the y over, right, by adding the y to this this side here, and then I can actually get the 2 to the other side, right, so subtracting the 2. So what happens is that I'm going to just get uh, the y on one side, and then the 5t doesn't... Um, it's not being added or subtracted, right? If we just keep it on this side here, so we just get 5t and then uh, the 2 being subtracted from both sides, so I get 5t minus 2. So now I have the expression for y and then also the expression for x, so I can write down the line equation. So x is t, so I just get t right here, and then for the y, we get 5t minus 2. So now I actually get the line for um, for the first line, and then I also get the uh, the vector equation for the second line, and then so now what happens is that I can simply just use their uh, direction vectors because to find the angle between those two lines, all I need to do is to find the angle between those two direction vectors. Yes. Yeah, so right now here, the direction vector, if I just write it out. And basically, we just look at the coefficients of the t. So you can see that the for the t, the coefficient is negative 2 for the x component. And then what about the y component? The coefficient for the t is just 1. So I just get negative 2, 1 for the direction vector for this line here. And what about this one? I can do the same thing. So just look at the coefficient for the t. So b2 is going to be, what is that? That's just 1 here because the coefficient of t is 1. Coefficient for the t here is 5. So we're going to just get 1, 5. So now I have the two vectors. And then so what's next is that I can now just use this formula. So actually, let's just recall. Let's just recall that there was a formula for finding the angle between the two vectors. So that formula would be cosine theta is equal to, let's say we have the two vectors u and v, so u dot v over the magnitude of u and then the magnitude of v. Okay, so that is our formula that we can use. Now here for this problem, u and v are actually just v1 and v2. So when it comes to finding the angle, then I'm going to use cosine theta is equal to, now let's put down the two vectors. So we are going to get negative 2, 1, dot it with 1 and 5. And then so what happens is that uh, the denominator 
we are going to have what find the magnitude well actually i'm just going to start doing it so the u is actually our v1 here so if we are finding its magnitude then i'm going to get square root of negative two square plus one square okay and then times what about the other one the other one is a second vector here so it's going to be one square plus phi square so now I have my right side of the expression. I can actually do the calculation here. So cosine data is equal to now take the dot product. Dot product is easy. So first component times first component. So I'm going to get negative two plus one times a five. So I'm going to get the five here. So what about the denominator? The denominator, it's going to be, this is four plus one and we get five. So square root of five. And then the other one, the other one is going to be what? This is one and then 25. So we are going to get 26. So doing the actual calculation here, we are going to get three and then over. And then the square root of 26 times five is 130. So we are going to get three over the square root of 130. Yeah, so now... Um, finding the angle is actually easy, but there was one thing that we need to pay attention to is that because if we go back to the problem, as you can see that we actually want to find the acute angle between the two vectors, right? So in this case, um, we need to make sure that the angle that we're finding is acute because the other angle will be obtuse. And so um, because this is positive, because this is positive, as you can see this, this value right here is positive. And so what does that mean? That means because cosine is positive, so we can actually say that the angle is actually in the first quadrant here. And so our angle, what happens is going to be an acute angle. So now um, we can simply just use cosine inverse of this expression here, which is three over the square root of 130 to find the angle. And then uh, basically that's the answer. But then if we want the answer in degree, then we can simply just put that in the calculator and then putting that in the calculator, we are gonna get 74.74 degree. And then, so that is the angle, that is the final answer between these two lines. And so this is just one way of solving this problem. There are actually other ways to do it. Um, without using vectors, there are actually there are ways to do that. But then um, this is one of those ways that we can use to solve this problem. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and share. I will see you next time.